Hi, I'm Dr. Omar Latif, the President and CEO of Rush University Medical Center. We're here to express our condolences through camera because we were unable to be together in person. This is a unique time in our history and a time where a pandemic has ravaged through the world, the country, and our state, and our city, and for all of you, your loved ones. We are sorry for the loss that you all have, and we are here to help in any way that we can moving forward. I'm Angelique Richard, Chief Nursing Officer and Senior Vice President for Hospital Operations. I'd like to extend my sincerest condolences to you, the loved ones, the families, the neighbors, the friends of those who have been lost during this COVID-19 pandemic. On behalf of the entire Rush family, we are so sorry for your loss. We're also sorry that we're unable to be with you today to, in the way that we normally would, um, to uh, console each other and to grieve together. So today, virtually, we'd like to pay our respects to your loved ones, and we'd like to honor their lives and commemorate their lives. Please know that they will never be forgotten. Hello, I'm the Reverend Wesley Sun, and on behalf of the Department of Religion, Health, and Human Values, I've been invited to offer a brief word of greeting and welcome. As we gather remotely, we also join together. And in this sacred space, indeed, all are welcome. Each of you joining us now and all that you bring are welcome here. We welcome your sorrow, your joys, your grief, and your fond memories. Each of you, accompanied by the resounding love and connection you carry, are welcome here. May this sacred time be one of affection, of mourning, and of remembrance. All are welcome in this place. Hello, my name is Angela Parkinson. And now to get us on our way into the body of today's memorial is a musical reflection. The song that we're about to hear called Bidding Farewell is known by every child in China where I grew up. Because it is so well known, I had thought that this was a folk song that had come down to us from ancient times, but when I did some research for today's memorial, I found that the melody is by 19th century American composer J.P. Ordway, and it is all but forgotten here in the U.S. However, this song was transmitted to East Asia where it was set to words, words that you will see on the screen in a moment, by Li Shutong, a great Buddhist monastic, which meant that this song plucks at the heartstrings of people in China and Japan to this day. Li penned these words as a way of saying goodbye to his family, his wife and children, when he took monastic vows. Let this song, this manifestation of a confluence of languages, cultures, lives, and joys and sorrows from afar bring us together today. Let us be together today knowing that it is in these confluences the seeds of eternity are planted. And here is bidding farewell played by the Chinese qin and flute.
I am calling you. I am calling you. I am calling you. I have an egg for you. I have rice for you. I have a chicken for you. I have everything waiting for you. Where are you? Where have you gone? Are you visiting your brother? Are you visiting your sister? Are you visiting your cousin? Are you looking at a flower? Are you in Laos? Are you in Thailand? Are you in the sky? Have you gone to the moon? Have you gone to the sun? Come home to your house. Come home to your mother. Come home to your father. Come home to your sisters. Come home to your brother. I am calling you. I am calling you. Come home through this door. Come home to your family. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. I am Reverend Mark Tabbitt, Director of Clinical Pastoral Education, and the reading I have for you today is entitled Learning to Grieve by Ram Das. It is important as we get older to learn how to grieve. Although this may sound self-evident, experience has taught me that it is not. In a culture that emphasizes stoicism and forward movement, in which time is deemed of the essence, and there is little tolerance for slowness, inwardness, and melancholy, grieving a healthy, necessary aspect of life is too often overlooked. As we get older, of course, and losses mount, the need for conscious grieving becomes more pronounced. Only by learning how to grieve can we cope can we hope to leave the past behind and come into the present moment? The older we get, the more we lose. This is the law of impermanence. We lose loved ones, cherished dreams, physical strength, work, relationships. Often, it seems like loss upon loss. All these losses bring up enormous grief that we must be prepared to embrace completely if we are to live with open hearts. Over the years in working with people who are grieving, I've encouraged them first of all to surrender to the experience of their pain, to counteract our natural tendency to turn away from pain. We open to it as fully as possible and our, allow our hearts to break. We must take enough time to remember our losses. Be they friends or loved ones passed away, the death of a long-held hope or dreams, the loss of homes, careers, or countries, or health we may never get back again. Rather than close ourselves to grief, it helps to realize that we only grieve for what we love. In allowing ourselves to grieve, we learn that the process is not cut and dried. It is more like a spiral that brings us to a place of release, abates for th a time, then continues on a deeper level. Often when grieving, we think that it's over only to find ourselves swept away by another wave of intense feeling. For this reason, it's important to be patient with the process and not be in a hurry to put our grief behind us. Hello, my name is Renita Jacobs, and I will be reading today from Psalm 56, verses 10 through 13. I praise God for what he has promised me. Yes, I praise the Lord for what he has promised. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? I will fulfill my vows to you, O God, and will offer a sacrifice of thanks for your help. 
for you have rescued me from death. You have kept my feet from slipping, so now I can walk in your presence, O oh God, in your life-giving light. A reading from Lamentations 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Your mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in the Lord. The Lord is good to those who wait, to the soul that seeks. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although the Lord will cause grief, you will have compassion according to the abundance of your steadfast love. For you do not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. In the spring, we found ourselves faced with a life that felt unrecognizable from the one that we had known before COVID-19 became a familiar phrase to our tongues. The normal daily rhythms that had previously been navigated with ease and little thought became challenges that required our full attention and often a lot of planning. Even a simple run to the grocery store could not be done without navigating a bunch of different items. And for many of us, this year brought a level of grief and loss beyond the disruption to our routines and norms. This service is a place to honor those who have died this year. What does it look like to grieve in a time when so many of our rhythms have been disrupted? When you face a time of loss, it is a very common experience to desire to long for things to return to normal. I wonder what it would be like to consider this time as a time of invitation to something new. I love the Ram Das poem that was read earlier. In that poem, we are invited to consider grief not as a destination to be completed, or as a set of tasks to successfully navigate. But rather, we are invited to allow ourselves the space to grieve, to sit in the place of discomfort and sorrow, and as we do, to experience the possibility to move into something deeper. Das describes it this way. In allowing ourselves to grieve, we learn that the process is not cut and dried. It is more like a spiral that brings us to a place of release, abates for a time, then continues on a deeper level. A few years ago, I experienced a loss that brought me to my knees. I questioned everything I had believed to be true. Following this time of pain, I found myself drawn to a labyrinth that was near my house. And I would walk the labyrinth over and over and over. And as I walked the path coming near and then far from the center and back in again, over and over, my body eventually began to, began to process the pain that I experienced. And over time, I was able to step towards something new. Buddhist teacher and nun Pema Chodron describes this experience of loss this way. We think that the point is to pass the test or overcome the problem. But the truth is that things don't really get solved. They come together and they fall apart. Then they come together again and fall apart again. The healing comes from letting there be room for all of this to happen. Room for grief, for relief, for misery, for joy. 
What if it is in this place when nothing is normal that everything becomes possible? As we acknowledge what we have lost this year, the precious lives who are no longer with us, we are invited to a new experience of aliveness. It is tempting to believe that we are on this journey alone. And I fear that many of us receive the message that grief is a solitary event. Perhaps even as you watch this video, you are alone. May I suggest that we are not designed to navigate the waters of grief in solitude. Perhaps the unexpected gift of the pandemic has been the reminder that we all, to one extent or another, have experienced loss. When you see your neighbor, you may not know the specifics of what they've experienced. You may not know their story, but you know there is a story. I encourage you to find someone who you, can, who you are able to share your story of grief with. It may seem too simple, but there is something sacred and beautiful to have someone look at you and say, me too. In that look, a thousand connections can be made. This time of grief is an invitation to new rhythms. The specifics will be as unique as each of us. It may mean taking a moment at the end of each day to journal the things that you are grateful for from that day. Or maybe it is taking a time to slowly breathe in meditation at the start of each day. Or perhaps it is sending a letter to someone who you cannot physically be with right now. Even as we continue to live in the disruption, there is an invitation to new rhythms. Be gentle with yourself. I invite you to consider releasing yourself from the guilt of not doing enough. And allow yourself to be. If you are like me, this is often very uncomfortable and requires me to be intentional. We are each invited to experience the expansive love of the divine. In Lamentations 3, the author reminds us of the compassion and abundance of love. The psalmist reminds us that the light of God is a life-giving light. Today, as you listen to this service, it is my prayer that you know that you are not alone and that you feel held and surrounded by love in a way that is tangible. Would you join me for a short prayer? Holy God, who is known by many names, I thank you that you are able to join us in our places of grief. And I pray that each person that hears this would experience and know your love in a way that is astounding. I thank you for your reminder of this sacred space today. In your holy name we pray, amen. We light this candle in this moment to bring the light of the divine presence into the celebration of memory. As this flame flickers, may it reignite our memories and illuminate our prayers. May our souls and the souls of our beloveds be held close in the precious shelter of this time. This is El Malay Rachamim, a Jewish morning chant from the second century. I will chant first in Hebrew, then give the translation in English. El Malay Rachamim 
שוכן במרומים. אמצא מנוחה נכונה תחת כנפי השכינה במעלות קדושים וטהורים כזוהר הרקיע מזהירים לנשמות אלה יקירינו קרובינו שהלכו לעולמם בגן עדן תהא מנוחתם לכן מעל הרחמים יסתירם בסתר כנפיך לעולמים ויצרור בצרור החיים את נשמתם. אדוני הוא נחלתם, וינוחו בשלום על משכבם. God, filled with mercy, dwelling in the heaven's heights, bring proper rest beneath the wings of your divine presence. Amid the ranks of the holy and pure, which shine like the brilliance of the skies, to the souls of all those we recall today, who went to their eternal rest. May their memory be a blessing. May they rest in paradise. May you, who are the source of mercy, shelter them beneath your wings eternally and bind their souls among the living. God is their portion, so they may rest in peace where they lie. And let us say, Amen. In 1873, Horatio Spafford wrote the song that we are about to sing right now. Um, Spafford had encountered a lot of loss in his life. His son had died in the Chicago fire, and not soon afterwards, his business went to pieces. So his family went ahead to go to England, and while they were on the ship, their, their boat wrecked. And all four of Spafford's daughters died. His wife alone lived. As Spafford followed later, he penned this song when he had reached that point in the ocean in which his family died. There was something that welled up inside him in the midst of that grief that enabled him to say, it is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll Though trials should come, 
And now for the prayer of thanksgiving, you are invited to join Mackenzie in saying, we give thanks when I raise my hand. Let us pray. Amidst the mystery of all our beginnings and all our endings, here from the midst of our grief, we meet in the middle of all things. Here, as our beloved ones become ancestors, our offerings are ourselves. To you, ancestors, we give thanks. For the stars above that sing in every language and below the paths that continue, for the ties that bind us into ourselves and send tap roots into the heart of the earth. We give thanks. For peace like a river that lays us down by still waters. And for the rolling storms that blot out the sun and moon. For the deep where unmapped veins move. Where even away from the sun and moon, mountains are nourished. We give thanks. For the door to home to which we are called, to which we call you. For mother, father, sister, and brother. For our beloved ones, our ancestors, ones that make us cry, come back, come back again. We give thanks. I'm Clayton Thomason, the chair of the Department of Religion, Health, and Human Values. And I'm reminded in this moment as we finish our time together that life is short and we have no time to waste, to gladden the hearts of those who walk this journey with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, be quick to serve, and may peace be with you this day and always. Amen.